been a pivotal part of our wellbeing puzzle mindfulness that you can't um, focus on well-being if you're not focusing on the, the the tools for mental wellness and I think mindfulness is, is really pivotal to that and I think it's pivotal for kids and I think it's pivotal for adults and I think that when you're looking at schools which are highly complex places yeah. you've got you know a teacher that's managing their own needs managing the needs of 25 other students mindfulness gives everyone that little brain break I guess to be able to move on with what is a complicated day yep. um, even if things are running well things are complicated I think if I compare um, the past two years where we've done lots of mindfulness opposed to previous years where um, mm. it wasn't um, as much of a big focus um, I think that you can definitely notice a difference in um, the way the children are able to regulate their emotions and recognize their emotions as yep. well the change over that time over these last two years since uh, I've been gone. Uh, I, I walked back into the school and there was a, a calmness that wasn't there two years ago. And when talking to students about um, putting themselves in a mindful state or toggling, um, uh, regulating their behaviour, they've got a language t that's common across the school and they've got strategies, mindful strategies that many of them employ not only for themselves within the class when they're feeling heightened or in their learning pit or when they're feeling stressed but they're they're taking that home to their families and their families are also um, using those mindfulness strategies so it's a um, it's a community of mindfulness not just uh, an individual journey which is um, most exciting there are many teachers who now incorporate the mindfulness within their classroom but it's because it helps them as well. They have the mindful bell. I found even myself, you walk into a room, you're working with children, you hear the mindful bell, and you just automatically go through the process of breathing, having that deep breath, taking a moment and resetting. Uh, there are teachers who, who will openly admit, oh, they're in their learning pit, oh, they're feeling distressed, and they will go through a mindful activity, sometimes saying, oh, it's for the students, but it's for them as well. So, but uh, I find it, it keeps me calm as well. I yeah. think um, I quite often go and have some deep breaths. And <laughs> yeah. I am a lot more transparent with the students. It's like, actually, I need this just as much as you do. Mm. And, that, and, they, and for them to see that is yeah powerful because they're like you know there'll be times and they're like miss t i think you need to i, I you can see your red toggle. yeah i see <laughs> you your red to beast is about to wake up well maybe some you know mindful breathing <laughs> some finger breathing i'm like fantastic a place where yeah i i kind of need to recenter ground myself yeah. and that and so yeah i think um i'm yeah less less prone to, to to having it all together in front of the students they they understand that actually as adults we 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 need it just as yeah, much um, yeah exactly <laughs> they had the opportunity to co-regulate with students by using mindful practices mm -hmm. whether that's a mindful bell that goes off every 30 minutes or it's a um, very structured mindfulness practice or that's a moment just to focus on breathing to as a, a um, transition between activities but it gives them an opportunity to engage in their own well-being as being really mindful of the well-being of mm -hmm. students too yeah. um, you know one of the things that we've um, manage to, I guess, embed is um, teachers and acting mindfulness at um, well, our staff meetings, um, and that's actually um, a way of them promoting um, some of the um, mindfulness that they're doing in their classrooms, as well as um, you know, it's it's a way of bringing staff down after a hard day, hard hard Monday, and it you know, sharing those little stories, making you yourself a little bit vulnerable too to say you know that it's okay it's okay to acknowledge when I came in I was a little bit high and I was dealing with this and to have that five minutes to concentrate on on, on breath and um, and bring yourself down makes does make that that big difference There's certainly many children now who will talk about going away and toggling. So they'll, they'll talk about what breathing technique they've used to toggle to bring themselves from a heightened, and we talk about the hand model, so they bring themselves from having flipped their lid down to a calmer state. Their prefrontal cortex is, is, is a little more in control and they do that many times through their breathing, their um, ability to um, calm their bodies and their minds in a way that um, allows them to be ready then to mm. enter back into that learning zone. Mm. So it's really 
it's powerful. Classroom, and mm. it's not like an added, yeah. um, an added thing for us as teachers. I really f see the benefit of it. For us as classroom teachers, teachers aren't too busy for that, and we say that really say to them, but are you too busy to deal with the ramifications of not doing it? And yeah. five minutes um, of looking at mindful practice each session or once a day is nothing compared and getting a good 45 minutes of learning Focus out of learning. kids, yeah. learning out of kids yeah. is, is worth it when you may not do it and may not get anywhere near that amount of um, time in the classroom to spend on learning. So it really is about a small investment for a big return. Like yeah. we have lots of different little activities. Yeah, some that, exactly. Some that are 30 seconds and some that are a few minutes. Yep. Um, yeah. But I think a lot, one of the first ones that we introduce is definitely around breathing. Yeah. So it's def we introduce all different types of breathing. We have the five finger breathing, rainbow yeah. breath, all of those e types breath. of things, yeah. all achieving the same thing, but just have different names. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I find that um, you can see children using those skills when they need them. So. I just sit down and um, put my, like, just cross my legs and I start breathing and sometimes before I do some races, which are scooter races, I um, sit on the ramp with my legs hanging off the bar and I uh, just do some four, seven, eight breathing. Um, I usually feel a bit anxious and I'm usually a bit nervous to do that race because sometimes I don't win and sometimes I do win, but I just toggle I just do some four, seven, eight breathing first and it puts me in the zone and I feel comfortable and ready to do my race. I think mindfulness was a really good way to help me get through my thoughts. So that's why I'll be alone, get my thoughts out when I'm just getting really stressed. I like to just be alone with my crystal, rubbing it. I might have some like love nothing, I put it on my forehead. It's like just like smell this, um, smell the lavender and just, um, just close my eyes and rub my crystal. Just, I just like to feel something um, when I'm stressed or I need mindfulness. Um, at the beginning, how I'm really stressed, I just, I'm kind of still stressed, but when I get to the end, I'm getting calm because I went through the whole thing and it felt, now I feel much more better at the end. What happens to all the sort of stressed out thoughts when you they just that? They just go away. When I get into the moment, they just go disappear, go away. All my happy thoughts come. Okay, so one time Quinn was so angry and then she was lying on a change mat and then I was like, Quinn, let's do some breathing, but then Quinn didn't listen to me, so I just got my two fingers and then put it up, and two fingers were sticking out of the hole from the change mat, and I was just going like... And then it looked like that Quinn was breathing with me too. It sounded like the longer that she took a breath, and then Quinn calmed down. I taught my brother because he wanted to learn how to do it. You taught your brother how to do switching on and switching off. And unicorn breath. What's unicorn breath? So you like put your hands together and, and you breathe in. And breathe out. And this is called unicorn breathing. Mm -hmm. Does that one help you to calm down or get to sleep? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do a lot of mindfulness at home by myself, especially trying to go to sleep. I have some sleeping problems, I can't get to sleep very well. Um, I do a lot of mindfulness then. When I, for when I'm sleeping, I like to use this one where I'm in a dark room and the darkness envelopes me in like a big sort of thick blanket and that usually helps me go to sleep. I like grounding meditations because I don't always feel very centred or in the moment. 
because I have a few things that I'm very busy with. We, are, we have a lot of stuff to do at home, so grounding ones are always good to help me find my centre. Taking what they know at school and employing it at home and with their families as well, it's really powerful to see that. Um, you know, whereas we had students in um, previously that were, when they became elevated, okay, it would probably go on for a prolonged period. Now we can have a conversation around what they need to focus on. Um, obviously we could co-regulate with them, um, focusing on the breathing and they get us, the, you know, they can bring themselves down much quicker than what they were able to. Um, teachers are very mindful about using the practice at a time when the kids are the kids mm. are going to be really elevated, so teachers are making very deliberate decisions to do more structured mindfulness practices when kids come in from, from lunch. And when we interview students about that, they're able to say that that practice then helps them to transition successfully from a difficult situation in the playground to going back to the classroom and being ready to learn and being present and um, ready to do that. But I think you felt calmer than before, that's good. Yep. At ease. At ease. And whose heart rate was maybe quite fast? And then through the breathing and watching, they noticed that there was a difference. Yeah. So we're slowing down our heart rate. Breathing in. Holding it. And breathing out. Great job. All right. Okay, you're ready? One, two, three. Toes, legs, core, arms, face. Hold and switch off. You're a lot more or less now. Is we're going to breathe in and breathe out. Now, are we breathing quickly or slowly? Slowly. Are we breathing loudly or quietly? What I've noticed is that our kids' tolerance for difficult feelings has grown mm. significantly. So rather than acting on that difficult feeling in a way that is, um, you know, it leads to sabotaging of relationships, or leads to disruption in the classroom, they're actually able to sit and tolerate that feeling a little bit more than they have been previously. And so that, that's been something that we've noticed creates a level of calm throughout the school. So how do you work? What do you do to help yourself through moments where you're feeling difficult emotions? I go and play for a bit. Play or draw, thank you. Yeah? What do you do? Toggle. Toggle. So can you explain what toggling is and, and what toggling you do when you need to Five help yourself? Five cycles of square breathing. And there's also that they can focus on mindful breathing if they're stressed in the playground, right through to they've had a fight with a, um, a sibling at home, they're able to sit in their bed and find a, a spot to, to focus on you know, their breathing and focus on mindful practice during that time. I think. And that idea between um, being in control, using the smart part of your brain, uh, you know, the PFC, and um, or flipping your lid and going limbic, um, which you know uh, um, we need to be mindful of, um, and that's part of the conversation I have with, especially some of our young boys, around the importance of us as we're turning into men or them turning into men, um, being in control. Like it's okay to get angry. Um, it's okay to be anxious, but it's not okay to hurt, or it's not okay to intimidate, it's not okay to threaten. So they've got to acknowledge that, that, that switch that they can flick mm. to, to, to get their lid back down before it goes like that. Okay. So. so essentially I think we're preparing kids to be better citizens. Absolutely, yeah. 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 More responsive people. Mm. Mm. I think it's when we want to focus on skills that kids can translate to, to later life into other realms of their life as well so the fact that they're actually able to articulate that has demonstrated that mindfulness has become part of our culture here at Brackenridge. We came into school with a staff wellbeing program and followed that up with several student wellbeing trainings and we've also included in school some mindfulness mentoring. So I've been in school with teachers either demonstrating practices or watching teachers lead practices and then giving some feedback. And I guess what I've noticed over the course of time is teachers becoming more comfortable with the practices and because they're more comfortable with the practices obviously then children are becoming more um, comfortable. Really. I think encouraging teachers to find a practice that suits them. So we have a teacher that's very focused on yoga so she does lots of mindful movement that works really well for her and it really taps into something she values and she really likes as well. So. Oh. 
um, they're really committed to the mindfulness journey, really wanting to help students with their well-being, like they really care about student well-being here. And, and you breathe in and breathe out. This is, this is about life and we know that life um, can present some very bumpy pathways on, on the way and um, you know this is about uh, giving them some I guess tools in their little kit bag to be able to pull out when they when they're navigating that bumpy path so um, you know that's I think a, a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm.